here. Caitlin Clark just went number one overall to the Indiana Fever. Okay. I wish that was trivia. I was like, all right, what is Indiana's WNBA team's mascot? <laughs> Y'all would have been like, uh, temperature? <laughs> no, fever. All right. I hope. Uh, so here we go. I saw this clip. Uh, Clay Travis talking about Caitlin Clark. Now, we know Caitlin Clark has gotten a lot of attention, one, because of her game. Let's start there. You don't get that much attention because you're white, because you're at Iowa. You get it because you're balling. And y'all got to start there because this conversation is going to get into the identity politics to the race. But it all, we know who Caitlin Clark is because who that's shooting from the logo? That's Caitlin Clark. So Clay Travis has some issues with Paul Pierce and Jamil Hill and the comments they made about not Caitlin Clark's game particularly, but her race. Let's listen to Clay Travis talk about it. The fallout of Caitlin Clark being good at basketball is actually crazier to me than Caitlin Clark being successful. Paul Pierce saying he was blown away that a little white girl could be this successful playing against black women. Jamel Hill came out and said the only reason people are paying attention to Caitlin Clark is because she's white. And I just want to start with this. Your race does not define what you are capable of or what you are not capable of. Your own individual work ethic, talent, and pursuit of excellence defines what you can achieve. This idea that you're going to define Caitlin Clark as Jamel Hill does or as Paul Pierce does because she's a little white girl, I don't think you should define her excellence based on her race. And the fact that we allow identity politics to encapsulate so much of the discussion is, I think, a failure. Okay, I'm with him. I'm with him in the absolute sense, right? Like, he didn't say anything wrong. We get it, right? I used to have teammates all the time, and I used to not like this. I don't use the N-word anymore. I used to, though. Um, I don't use it anymore because it's like, just not the energy I need, and I know I ain't that, and I don't want you to call me that, so why am I giving you something you can't give back to me? Golden rule. I don't do anything I don't want done back to me, which includes saying something to somebody who can't say something to me. One of my best friends, Matt Lindzen, is white. He ain't never said the N-word in front of me. <laughs> and I ain't never said the N-word to him because I can't give him something he can't get back to me. That's this simple rule. Do you, but that's how I do it. I'm with you, Clay, in the absolute sense. You didn't say anything wrong. But these conversations, nuance, absolute versus relative. Let's have a relative conversation because I hate it when my teammates used to say white boy or little white girl or white girl. Like I'm like, because y'all don't like black boys. <laughs> y'all don't like the black girl. So I, once again, go to rule. That's just me. Stickler to the rules. Here we go. I'm going to make this relative. Because Kaylin Clark got a, another level of attention because of her race. Let's not deny that. You want to know why? Because it's rare. And rare in this sense. She is a white woman playing basketball, which culturally has been represented by black women more than white women, right? It's a lot of white people playing basketball though. <laughs> but then when you see it to the rarity, you look at the Mount Rushmore, you look at the top players, you will see a heavier slant towards black, but there are white women who play and play well, right? But she got that attention bump, and I think Paul Pierce and Jamil Hill want to have that conversation. The reason why in this situation I understand that conversation, even though I hate identity politics, as soon as you start talking race and gender, and you don't understand it unless you, I'm like, this world is round for a reason. We get it. <laughs> we don't have to live it to get it either, right? You don't have to walk in someone's shoes always to understand what they're going through. Do you? So I say this. The same effect that happened with Caitlin Clark, that bump, is the same bump I get every single day because I went to Columbia. And here's, here's something new. Here's something revealing. I knew that when I went to Columbia. I knew the dude from Compton, big, black, dumb jock, maybe, going to Columbia was going to make him say, why? Because Columbia ain't mostly black. <laughs> 
Why? Because most of the people that went to Columbia were not me, didn't look like me, and certainly weren't from where I was from. So I did something that was unique, even though I wasn't the only one. Like Clayton Clark ain't the only good white woman basketball player. Duh. Number two overall, white. It's the fact that, wow, we do know in this contrast, the backdrop typically is this. It's the Eminem effect in rap. We get it. So it's okay to have this relative nuanced conversation. Even though Clay Travis is right, in an ideal world, in the absolute sense, and in the world I live in, man, come on, dog. Like, I say Kayla Clark's a beast, and she gonna ball out in the NBA. If you can shoot from the logo, what you think in the WNBA you ain't gonna be able to shoot from there? Come on out here then. Wah, wah, and I'm down in the lane, passing it like she does to the top level, etc. She gonna ball. Y'all need to stop. But this conversation ain't just about, oh, she's unique and she got that bump, the Eminem bump, the same bump you got, Marcellus. It's also about why people hating. You got to fight the powers that beat, like the power dynamic that lives in people's head. And some of it's archaic. Some of it is dated, outdated. That white means powerful, more powerful than you. Even though if you check socioeconomics, you check some of the statistics right now, they ain't got all the power. But the point is, even if you want to associate white with power, so you can associate it with yourself as a power if you're powerful. You know how many black people I know that are powerful? You know how many black people I know that I see on the daily that are hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. You know what I mean? But like, so this whole like, she represents power, so now we gonna hate her because now here they go trying to take over basketball too, or it's happening in the NBA a little bit, the whole backlash against Europeans, even though we giving them some props too, like we need to practice like them. We need to get our kids going earlier and fundamentally sound like them, but they still be like, ah, remember Jokic? Versus MB, remember the MVP? Backlash. Backlash on Jokic. Why? He already won his group dark. <laughs> Racial. When you represent the power structure, even though Japanese Americans out here slicing up white people, <laughs> it's crazy, right? Even though you can see a lot of different demographics having their wins, the point is we know in America people still associate white with the power. And now you're going to do basketball like that too? People are in their feelings. I just say it like this. Christian McCaffrey talked a little bit about it. I don't think he went in depth. But I remember he saying how it was different for him being a white running back and more difficult because every time you see him, you're like, nah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. He ain't that elusive. He ain't. Now everybody like, yeah, he is. But why that resistance? Do I face resistance because you went to Columbia? Nah, you ain't that smart. Nah, you ain't, you ain't that guy. I don't feel it. I don't register it. I don't. I just hang my degree up and say, point, talk to that. <laughs> if I'm C-Mac, I say, talk to my skills. Talk to my skills. Talk to my yardage. If I'm Caitlin Clark, I'm like, talk to that jump shot. But we don't. So I just want a healthier decorum, healthier respect, discourse. But in simple and short, if you're going to give it out, be ready to take it back. If you're going to dish it, be able to receive it, right? You give it, you're going to end up getting it. So let's see how that turns out in this absolute versus relative conversation. Good conversation there, but this whole like taking shots at people or hating or just resisting greatness. Do y'all really care about the epidermis that much? <laughs> like, let that girl ball. If people are mad, she's going to eat. Trust me, she gonna eat.